All right, all right, all right, guys. Tonight, we are going to talk all about Emmet. And what is Emmet? Emmet is the essential toolkit for web developers. Yeah, I have no clue what that meant either the first time I read it. So basically, what you need to know is that it's like magic, and it's awesome, and it will completely cut down your coding time. And as when I first heard about it, I didn't really understand it until I saw it in action. So um, let's go ahead and see it in action, and... You know, hopefully you're as excited about it as I am. So first off, let's go ahead and download it. I'm going to try to walk you through this as best as I can here. So we're going to go download. And then most of the people that will be watching this video has sublime, sublime text as their editor. So let's click on that. Boom. All right. Takes us to GitHub. Emmet for sublime text. Official Emmet plugin. Previously called Zen Coding. How to install. Here we go. Um... Check out the warning, and then for, we're going to do it the easy way, so we're going to do it manually. So let's go ahead and download right here. So we have that downloading, and then we're going to go to our Sublime. And we're going to go to Sublime Text, we're going to go to Preferences, we're going to go to Browse Packages. All right, so we're here in our Sublime Text 3 packages. You might be in Sublime Text 2, but I'm going to open up a new tab. Um, you could open up a complete new Finder window by doing Command N um, on a Mac or, you know, open up however you do browsing, whether it's in Mac or Find Files in Mac or Windows. So I'm going to do Command T to open up a new tab. With that, we're going to go over to Downloads. We're going to zip Emmet Sublime Master and we're going to take it over here to packages alright we're going to drop it in packages you should see it in there and you see down here loading PYV8 binary successfully loaded awesome so let's go over here and check it out all right, now, if I did this correct, it'll work. So let's do a little test. First off, how many times when you come and open up a new document and you have to start and you're like, ah, oh, I hate typing, you know, the doc type, the head, the title, the body. Well, maybe you don't, but I'm lazy, so I do. So let me show you something. To start off with a brand new document, assuming that it's written in HTML5, we're just going to put in exclamation mark right there. And then we're going to push tab. All right, so it didn't work. Let's figure it out. First thing we're going to do to figure it out is we are going to quit Sublime. And we are going to restart it. And I'm going to close this file. Or I'm just going to do a new file here. New file. Now let's try and push tab. Didn't work again. Hmm. Let's check control E. There we go. Control E. Beautiful. All right, usually it's it's tab. So let me see if I can figure out how to change that real quick. All right, guys. So I have it all figured out. Basically, for the tab to work, you have to have it saved as an HTML file or one of these files listed right here. Um, different versions of HTML and different version of CSS. CSS, SAS, and LESS, which are all versions of CSS or languages similar to CSS. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and um, actually cancel that. We're just going to, I'm going to create another new file. So let's start from scratch here. First command to start a document. Let's do 
exclamation mark, and then we're going to say control E. All right, boom. Look at all that. We got doc type, we got HTML tag, we got head, we got body, we got closing tags. So let's save it, and then we're going to say emit test that HTML save. Now we have it saved as an HTML file. So what's the first thing we want to do? We want to show you how easy it is. And so with Emmet, you use CSS abbreviations to, um, to create things in HTML. So that may, may not make sense or I may not be saying it right. So let's create a div. All right. So div, that's a, a CSS abbreviation. Push tab. It gives us the opening div and the closing div tag. Maybe we want to make a div with a class. Uh, let's give it a class name of Emmet. So div, this is how you do it in CSS. Emmet tab gives us div with a class of Emmet. Well, Ryan, a lot of times we don't do div dot Emmet. We just do dot Emmet or period Emmet, whatever your class name is. Push tab, same exact thing. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through a list of a lot of our, um, a lot of my favorite features of Emmet, and then I will link to you after this document to two awesome uh, links here. This is you know the seven uh, awesome Emmet HTML time saving tips, and then a cheat sheet if you really want to go through the documentation. And I like to have this open as I'm playing around. So boom. This is good here. We're going to go back over and go through some of the most common things. So um, in our course, HTML course, you know, first you um, create a tower page. So you have a Jumbotron section. So how does that go? Um, let's delete these top three divs. Actually, let's just leave them there for reference. But say I wanted to start that Jumbotron section. So it has a class of Jumbotron. And then... It has a child element with a div that has a class of container. Remember, to wrap the text, keep it within a certain width. Then it has a child element um, that's an H1. And then, what else? We had a paragraph, but wasn't a child element. So this is a sister sign. Boom, boom. And they actually, we just saw that. Child, sibling, not sister, sorry. I like to call it sister. Sister, sister. But here, we'll push tab, boom, look at all that it created for us. All right, and you notice how I immediately jumped to that H1 right there? This is where it was sitting afterwards. Um, that's because that's one of the target areas. So you can switch between the target areas by doing control option and right arrow key. And if you want to go back to one, boom. See that? So you can quickly type in, this is my header. Control option right arrow key. This is my paragraph text. Pretty cool. Alright, now one thing I forgot to put here was the button. So let's go ahead and put the button in. And so we got button. And then we gave it a class of BTN, but it has usually has multiple classes here in Bootstrap. So what's another class? BTN LG BTN default. So this is how you assign multiple classes here. Tab it, boom, gives us that button, class with BTN, BTN merge, and BTN default. Ooh, another thing we do pretty frequently is we create, um, you know, equal columns. So when we're, you know, pushing things to the left and the right for the structure of the site. So how does that go? Usually we have a, a div with a class of row. Then we have... or a div of a class of container, then a div of a class of row, then let's do a div of a class of column medium six, and then it's sibling with a class of column medium six. So just a quick refresher, when I say sibling, see we have a child element, tabs in right here, the rows within the container, and then we have two child elements, divs of class of column medium six within this row. So these are siblings, you know, they're childs of row. That's the mommy or the daddy, and these are the kids. So there's the siblings. So we got that there. Oh, and sometimes we like to put these, you know, we like to put a paragraph in between here. So let's do what we did. We did container. 
name with a um, child element div class row and then div class column medium six and then that should have a child element of that has a paragraph in there but now we also need to do another column medium six with a paragraph contained in it well this is what we call climbing up climbing up the dom so this is like a family tree and we're climbing back up so we want to go back up to this this row section here so to climb up we give an up carrot and now we're in this row section and then we want it to have a child element of and you'll learn more about this when you take our JavaScript and jQuery class which is coming up soon so now we want row, we're back up in row because we climbed back up the DOM. Actually, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. We're not in row. We were in paragraph and we climbed up the DOM one. So now the parent of paragraph is column medium six. So we want to do a sibling column medium six with a child element paragraph. Boom. All right. And what was it again? Control option right arrow. Switch between where we want to write. Nice. All right. So what else? What are some other cool things gets me excited here? Oh, yeah. You can insert the text. So instead of having to come up here and do this is say this is my header, this is my paragraph text, let's do H1 and let's insert the text. So this is, is my header text. Let's tab it out. See? Right there. Boom. Puts it in there for us. Ah, uh, maybe we have an maybe we have an attribute in the tag we want to do. So let's do it with like a a ref. So boom, href equals http www dot blog dot com. Oh, and then we want it to have some text as well. Click here, tab that. Boom, gave us an anchor tag with the attribute and the text in there and last but not least we have you can multiply so uh, maybe you have an unordered list and give it a class to my list and then you want list items the class of my list items but you want five list items so all we gotta do is multiply that by five and look at that unordered list Five list items, all the class of my list item. We can do control, option, right arrow to switch between them. And, I mean, this thing's, you know, it's obviously there's a quick learning, or there's a little bit of a learning curve here. But once you start getting used to, you know, what the, what the CSS abbreviations are, you can, you know, really eliminate, you know, the, the recurring stuff. The, the stuff that, you know, or this is what we call identifying scaffolds. So... You know, in, in Rails, they're called scaffolds as well. This is the stuff that you do all the time. It's the mundane stuff. It's the stuff that takes the most time. So if you can, you know, cut down on it, boom, you can be moving through code so fast. And, you know, we always preach quantity over quality. These are just some of the few things, probably some of the most common things you'll come across in Emmet. And, uh, you know, practice these. Get used to them. I know there's going to be a slight learning curve, as we said, but promise the upside once you get used to how fast it is, you're going to be just blazing through sites. Hope you enjoyed this. Once again, as in the comments, keep including, you know, what you want to hear. We've heard a lot of requests for WordPress and child themes, and that will be coming to you soon. So um, cheers, guys, and thanks for watching.